Hey guys, we're here at Fresh Time Market and I want you to meet my two friends. This is Carrie Clifford. <laughs> She's a spokesperson and a registered dietitian with Fresh Time Market. And Marissa Moser. She, she is with Rush University Medical Center. She's also a registered dietitian. You guys asked, and so you got it. We were talking about the power of cancer-fighting foods, what they can and can't do, what you should eat, and what you should probably stay away from if you want to ward off cancer. So Carrie's going to run through at the very beginning the types of foods that we're going to talk about. So why don't you start here? Yeah. So we picked out 10 foods collaborating with Marissa. We found a lot of research shows how foods are linked with preventing cancer, but we never can say one causes or one you know prevents sure. it entirely. So the 10 we picked here, the one is pomegranate seeds, Second one is manuka honey, matcha powder or green tea. Okay. Then we have turmeric, mushrooms, cruciferous vegetables, which we'll tell you what's in that jar later, which is uh, cauliflower. Okay. And then goji berries, which are dried up. Cumin, the spice. Acai berries or acai bowls. And then the last one is any greens, leafy veggies okay. are the 10. Those are the 10, so the 10 top cancer-fighting foods. So Marissa is going to talk about why each one has special qualities, and then Carrie is going to talk about how you can work it into your diet and how much you should eat. So do you want to start, Marissa? Yeah, so I do want to make comment that these are for healthy individuals and that if we're really talking about foods here. Um, your diet is very important. There's a lot of research that shows that fruits and vegetables, whole grains and beans actually reduce your risk for cancer. And then poor diet quality actually is a huge role. About a third of our cancers are actually because of poor diet and what you're eating. So here. I want to repeat that again. Marissa just said a third of the cancers that they see at Rush University Medical Center are because of poor diet. So it all begins with what we put into our body, right? Exactly. Yeah, that, I think that's such an important statistic. And make sure you guys can hear us all. Give us a thumbs up if you guys can hear <laughs> us or if we need to talk louder. Okay, so Marissa, let's start then um, with the uh, the pomegranate juice and the berries. Yeah, so pomegranates the have these uh, uh, phytochemicals or phytonutrients that help protect your immune system and help di uh, from damaged DM DNA. Okay. And so these are... Um, polyphenols or flavonoids or uh, tannins and stuff like that have these antioxidant properties. Okay, so and then how do I use this, Karen? Yeah, so the pomegranates are really in season from like December to February, so you can still find them. I know we're getting past February, thankfully it's getting oh, yeah, warm out. You can find them already, um, you know, opened so you up can, so right. you don't have to get it messy. But you can do the pomegranate juice. It has as many antioxidants and oftentimes they're more um, concentrated in the juice. You don't get the fiber in there, but it's really great to grab the juice oh, okay. or fresh. Yeah. So if you do the seeds and you get the extra fiber benefit. Exactly. Okay. And then we threw them on top of a salad with the leafy greens, which are food number 10. Okay. Did you, did you want to add anything? Um, so antioxidants are, um, they help to prevent <laughs> DNA no, damage. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. They neutralize free radicals that can be caused by DNA damage, which can lead to cancer. So it's really important to really get a lot of antioxidants so in your diet every day. Yeah. I love the taste of this because... I think you assume it's going to be really uh, really sour like cranberry juice, and it's not. And good. so it's, it's real, really good. I like it. And the phytonutrients in the uh, pomegranates are what give it its flavor, its taste, and its color, too. All right, so how much of this should we be eating? So about a half a cup for the pomegranate seeds. Okay. And really, if you want to do the juice, again, a half a cup. And I would say if you do it every couple days or a couple times a week, really you're getting those antioxidants in as much as you can. Okay, so yeah. number two on the list is this honey that I've never heard of. Tell yes. Me about that. <laughs> so this is a food trend for 2018. Okay. It's not regular honey. It's manuka honey. So it's from New Zealand, actually. And Marissa, tell us why honey's so good. So manuka honey has these phytonutrients called flavonoids in there that have very beneficial antioxidant properties by inducing apoptosis or decreasing DNA cell damage. And for anyone that doesn't know what apoptosis means, I like to say it means it's killing cells. It's killing those cells that are building up and building cancer. Okay, and so we want to do that then? Yes, okay. exactly. Okay, and so is this, can we try this? Yes. Okay. So it, I feel like we're putting what? on wax. It kind of is like that. Yeah. So what makes the bees then in New Zealand different from the bees that we find in the Midwest? So it's from a special bush in New Zealand is, is where the bees are hanging out. Okay. And um, this is a little pricier than regular honey. But what's great about it is it has such strong antibacterial properties. What we did here is we added it on top of plain Greek yogurt. So it's a nice way to sweeten things up if you don't want to add regular sugar. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. I like it. It's a little thicker than the honey that we have here in the yeah. Midwest. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, and then what is next on the list? The next one is matcha powder. 
So matcha powder is, um, it's part of green tea. It actually has this antioxidant called EGCG. Now that's the acronym. I'm not actually going to pronounce the word. <laughs> um, it has a, a very large amount of EGCG, which is actually a very uh, um, beneficial antioxidant in um, green tea. And with that, we've seen in cultures in Asia and things like that where people drink a lot of green tea or they grew up drinking it, that's where we see a lower prevalence of cancer. So wow. that's where the research is showing. Now, if you don't want to sit around with your green tea every day, you can try this powder. It's great. It has 10 times the antioxidants of a green tea like glass. And this one actually has protein added. So what we did here, this makes a great breakfast. I know it doesn't look appetizing, <laughs> but it's vegetables. We also added an avocado berries and pomegranate juice. Oh wow, okay, yeah. so so how much of this do you need to consume for it to help? So about, for green tea, it's about, I think four cups, you know, on, on a given, on a, for it to be beneficial for okay, it. So like four cups a day then, maybe? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so, and then the matcha, it, that's a more concentrated yes. form. Yes. So yep. would you, the same amount, you would say, or? Um, that's a good question. Okay. It's about <laughs> it's about 10 times the amount of green tea in one serving. So wow. really you could do one serving has 21 grams of protein and then incorporating it into a smoothie is how you could have it. What, well, and I want to add to a little personal story. So my mom, Sally Jo, who I'm sure most yes. of you probably know if you're watching and I'm sure she's watching right now as well. She switched from coffee to drinking a little matcha latte in the morning. Yeah, yes. and Caffeine. she loves it, you guys. And she was addicted to coffee, and now she gets the powder and she warms up some almond milk, and then she pours the powder in and maybe adds a little honey. Yeah. and that's what she drinks throughout the day. Isn't yeah. that great? Yes, it yeah. has caffeine, which is also a perk. Who doesn't Super want that? Super easy. Okay, so let's talk about a cumin then. Yeah, so uh, turmeric, which, I'm yeah, sorry. its active ingredient is curcumin, okay. um, and Marissa, <laughs> tell and us about that. curcumin has many beneficial properties like antibacterial, uh, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, so it's really beneficial for cancer prevention. And Natalie, this was a food trend of 2017. I know we had it last summer and you drank the drink where it's made into oh, yeah, a, I remember that. Yeah, it's a yeah. powder. But what's great about um, turmeric is a lot of the supplements have it paired with black pepper to help with um, lowering inflammation and joints. But if you have just the spice, it actually more sits in your GI tract, and that's how it helps prevent those uh, colon cancer. Colorectal and pancreatic cancer. Wow. Yeah. So here we added it to couscous. You can put it in chicken. You could add it to your matcha smoothie. So really adding it to whatever you can. What, what kind of taste does this spice have? It's almost like what's in curry, like okay. a little bit more savory. Okay. So it's not a sweet spice like cinnamon by any means. And again, the phytonutrients are what give it its color, color too. So what's giving it its like orange, yellow color. Yeah, and then so how much do we have to eat then of that? I would say you're good with like half a teaspoon when you okay. stir it into things. Okay. It's very potent, so it colors things very brightly. Very brightly, I yeah. love that. Okay, and then mushrooms, you love them or hate them, not everybody <laughs> likes them. So we're really talking about dried mushrooms because dried mushrooms have more higher concentrations of these beneficial nutrients, which again lead to cancer prevention such as you know, uh, decreasing tumor uh, angiogenesis, inhibiting apoptosis and stuff like that. And there's a polysaccharide in um, shiitake mushroom, okay. which has very beneficial um, nutrients to it. So mushrooms are a food trend for 2018. Um, they're really being incorporated into like drops that help the immune system, or I've seen mushroom coffee, but really you can pick them up fresh or dried right back there. And what I do is I stir them into, you can add pasta, soup, and they have a savory, you know, flavor. Right. So really cutting down the amount of meat you're eating and putting in mushrooms. It's a great way to, okay. you know, incorporate Wait, Talk them. about this mushroom coffee. That piqued my interest. Yes. What is so it's about? available right over there okay. um, in the vitamin and body care section. And really what's great about it is it has the health benefits of mushrooms, but it's a coffee flavored thing. So it doesn't taste like mushrooms. That is incredible. Yeah, we can grab it later. Yeah. We're gonna have to grab it later. Yeah. I have to give you guys a review <laughs> of that because that sounds something very interesting. Okay, and then cauliflower. Yeah, so these are cruciferous vegetables. So we got our Brussels sprouts, our cauliflower, and our broccoli. And these have a lot of uh, fiber and carotenoids, which are the phytonutrients and phytochemicals. And dietary fiber has been very much linked with decreasing colorectal cancer. And also there's a lot of bioactive compounds in cruciferous vegetables, which are those fighting, you know, cancer fighting nutrients too. So don't worry, you don't have to get scared. I know people are very afraid of cauliflower and both sprouts. <laughs> but what I always say is um, cauliflower rice is one of the best things that the food industry came up with a couple years ago. It's literally cauliflower, just like this, ground up into rice. 
So you can throw it into, I just made stuffed peppers with some ground chicken and put it in there. You can make a pizza crust out of it or it's sold regularly like that. So it's a great way to add vegetables and your family won't even know. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is uh, goji berries. And goji berries have limited research, unfortunately, with human studies. But there was one study that showed that it actually may inhibit the growth of ER positive breast cancer cells. So maybe some literature there, but we're not really sure. Okay. Um, and with that, goji berries, I don't know where you find a goji berry tree in Illinois. So um, <laughs> we have them dried here in the bulk section. So you can scoop it up and pay for as much as you want. <laughs> Um, and here we put them into energy bites with oats and coconut. And what else did you put in there? And how did let's you make see. that? Yeah. <laughs> how did you make that? I need to well, know yesterday this. I combined okay. it all in a bowl. Okay. I also added some of the honey to make it stick together. Okay. And then also added, um, you know, the goji berries and coconut okay. oil to make it stick. Okay. Do you want to try one? Sure. Do you have anything else? Yeah, yeah and again, the color this? is what those phytonutrients and phytochemicals are, and there's a lot of antioxidants in goji berries, but the literature yeah. may not be there right now. They stick to your teeth. Yeah. They're not as sweet as you would expect from a dried berry, mm -hmm. um, but they are very tasty. Yeah. yeah. And the American um, Cancer Institute for Research is actually get, doing more research on goji berries and cancer. Oh, so. good. So we should know more shortly yeah, then about exactly. their benefits. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now cumin. Is now cumin. cumin. <laughs> Talk about that. So who doesn't love guacamole? My favorite thing. I do. Yep. So cumin has a phytochemical or phytonutrient called thymoquinone. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> in black cumin. So that's what the phytonutrient is in there. And what's great about cumin is it's what's added to Mexican dishes. So it's really tasty in guacamole. Or also I'm doing uh, shredded chicken tacos this weekend. So I'm going to add some cumin to it. I, I add it whenever I make chili. Because yeah. I always have it in my cabinet. And it's like got a smoky, just a great flavor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's something great. easy to add. Good for you too. Okay. Yeah. And then the last one is acai or acai berries. Unfortunately, there's really no human studies on it right now, but there are in vitro studies which have showed that the flavonoids, which give it its purple color, have many antioxidant properties. And again, with this one, tough to find fresh, but what's great is super trendy around the city going to re restaurants for acai berry bowls. As you can see here, I know it's hidden yeah, by our I, spinach. I've heard of these, but I've never, I've never seen one. It's like Bigfoot. I hear of it, but I've never seen it oh, in person. Oh, they're great. They're yeah. so delicious. <laughs> Popular on Instagram. So really, you buy these packets frozen. You puree it up with like coconut milk or whatever you want. And then you add on top the pretty stuff to make it look Instagram worthy. And what, what does this taste like? It's not super sweet. It's a little okay. bit more like a blueberry. Yeah, like a blueberry. Okay. You can't when it's in a smoothie. You can't. I, it's hard to really find the actual flavor of it, but okay. you can sometimes okay. taste it. Interesting. I yeah. like that. It looks very tasty. All right, and then we we want to end with spinach. Yeah, right? our last is green leafy vegetables such as spinach and. Um, Spinach, uh, also green leafy vegetables, have a lot of dietary fiber and carotenoids, such as beta carotene, which give it its um, beneficial um, impact. And carotenoids actually have been shown to decrease the risk of maybe mouth, pharynx, and larynx cancer. So all, oh. uh, all right in here. Okay. Oh, man. And you don't have to be a rabbit. Don't worry. I know everyone sees this big container and thinks, I'm not going to eat spinach every day. But what I do, you buy one of these, and you find every single way to use it that you can. Throwing it into quesadillas, throwing it into pasta smoothies. I even um, did stuffed chicken the other night with spinach and apples. So really any way that you can incorporate spinach throughout the diet will hide it for your husband's kids and whoever else. Scrambled eggs too. You could put it in there yeah, or yeah. soups even. I mean, I made yep. a kind of a stew the other day and, and wilted and it cooks up so fast, which is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great, you guys. You want to add anything else? Did so uh, anything? again, all these fruits and vegetables and uh, products up here have all these phytonutrients and phytochemicals and antioxidant properties that really can help reduce your risk for cancer prevention. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Do you have any questions? If you do and we miss them here, then I'll go back and check them out. Uh, or maybe you're viewing this not live, then post your questions. I'll check them out. And if I can't answer them, then I'll send it over to Marissa or Carrie and they'll make sure to get the information to you. So again, we are at Fresh Time Market. You can get all of these things there um, or probably your local supermarket as well. But this place has all of them. So thank you guys so much for all thank your you. help and your knowledge. It's so <laughs> amazing. Have a good day, guys. Bye.